what are ribosomes look at the blinking dots in the diagram in biology ribosomes are small granular organelles found in cytoplasm of all living cells they play a crucial role in the process of protein synthesis and are called protein factories of the cell in this video i will explain types of ribosomes based on their location detailed structure of ribosome with chemical composition and i shall synthesize a real protein called chignolin having 10 amino acid residues to practically understand how they actually work with the help of an amazing animation in a simple way step by step stay with me types of ribosomes ribosomes can be classified into two major types based on their location within the cell free ribosomes and bound ribosomes free ribosomes as the name suggests are not attached to any membrane bound organelle and are found floating freely in the cytoplasm of the cell these ribosomes are responsible for synthesizing proteins that are destined to function within the cytoplasm itself they are particularly abundant in cells with high protein synthesis demand such as liver cells and pancreatic cells which produce enzymes for digestion bound ribosomes on the other hand are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum a complex network of membranes in the cell these ribosomes synthesize proteins that are either incorporated into the cell membrane or transported to various organelles within the cell including lysosomes endosomes and the golgi apparatus bound ribosomes are prevalent in cells that are specialized for secretion or have a large membrane surface area such as cells in the pancreas that secrete insulin now let's talk about structure of ribosomes ribosomes are composed of two subunits the large subunit and the small subunit both subunits are made up of combination of ribosomal rna molecules and proteins The large subunit is so named because it is slightly larger than the small subunit. In eukaryotic cells, which include animal and plant cells, the large subunit is made up of combination of ribosomal RNA molecules, which are usually 28s, 5.8s, and 5s, which is the Swedberg unit, and approximately 46 different proteins. These proteins play crucial roles in catalyzing various steps of protein synthesis such as peptide bond formation. The small subunit as expected is smaller than the large subunit. In eukaryotic cells it consists of combination of ribosomal RNA molecules which are 18s and about 33 proteins. The small subunit helps in recognizing the messenger RNA sequence during translation and also assist in finding the correct starting point for protein synthesis. The third component of ribosome is the ribosomal RNA. Well, ribosomal RNA is a type of RNA that is a fundamental component of ribosome. It acts as the scaffolding providing a structural framework to hold the ribosomal proteins in place. Ribosomal RNA also participates directly in the catalytic activity of ribosomes aiding in the formation of peptide bonds between amino acids during protein synthesis. When both subunits are separate they are inactive but if they are present together it means they are activated and are synthesizing proteins. Now how ribosome synthesize protein? This section is very important because the process to understand protein synthesis is crucial for everyone. Pay attention to my words and watch animation for deep conceptual understanding. Now we know that major function of ribosome is to synthesize proteins for cell itself or for export to outside cell usually called as secretion. The process of protein synthesis involves ribosome itself, messenger RNA and transfer RNA with amino acid residues already present in cytoplasm can be divided into three phases. Initiation means start of process, elongation means how the process goes further and termination means how it ends and how newly formed protein is released. Let's form a real protein chignolin consisting of only 10 amino acids having primary sequence of amino acid as shown. You can see the transfer RNA anticodons with the respective amino acids, messenger RNA with codons and ribosomal units. This is the simplest raw material for protein synthesis. The first step of translation is initiation.
द स्मॉल राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट बाइंड्स टू द मैसेंजर आरएनए नियर द फाइव प्राइम एंड वेयर अ स्पेसिफिक न्यूक्लियोटाइड सीक्वेंस कॉल्ड द स्टार्ट कोडान एयूजी इज लोकेटेड द स्टार्ट कोडान गोज फॉर द अमाइनो एसिड मेथियोनिन व्हिच सर्व्स एज द इनिशिएटर फॉर प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस when small subunit is attached to messenger rna it's time now for the large subunit to join the complex creating a functional ribosome or activated ribosome it is end of initiation the next steps are included in elongation phase once the ribosome is assembled elongation begins during elongation the ribosome moves along the messenger rna reading the codons which are groups of three nucleotides and matching them with the appropriate amino acids each codon codes for a specific amino acid and the ribosome brings in the corresponding transfer rna which carries the correct amino acid now remember that there are nearly 40 to 60 types of transfer rna in eukaryotes which are specific for amino acids when it transports once the amino acid to ribosome and become free it immediately binds with second amino acid of the same type and is ready to, trans to transport it again the ribosome then catalyzes the formation of peptide bond between the amino acids creating a growing polypeptide chain the ribosome continues to move along the messenger rna reading each codon and adding the corresponding amino acid until it reaches a stop codon which may be uaa uag or uga as the stop codon approaches it signals for protein releasing factor which bind with ribosome to release the newly formed protein and messenger rna the process of translation i mean protein synthesis ends with termination when the ribosome encounters a stop codon a release factor binds to the ribosome causing the newly synthesized polypeptide chain to be released the ribosomal subunit dissociate from each other and the messenger rna is released which is ready to be translated again here is the newly formed protein chignolin in this way ribosomes form all the proteins required by the cell and this is the reason they are called protein factories of the cell in case of any question your comments would be appreciated and addressed if useful do press the like button thanks for your time